All right, let's go. Um, this, thank you for joining me today. Uh, let's get started with a little bit of uh, background here. So first by means of introduction, my name is Jason and uh, my background is in the developer uh, experience space, um, you know, making something um, that is usable by developers. Um, and, and that's something I've sort of had as a theme throughout my career. Um, a couple of things about what we're doing here. I'm basically signing up for um, a product that I've never used before. Um, don't really have any affiliation, but I've been curious. I heard the name, maybe I've seen it here and there uh, at events or other um, you know, blog posts and things like that, um, but haven't really explored it myself. And so really what this is all about is exploring developer experience. And uh, with that, I wanna make sure that there's an acknowledgement that the intention here is to be kind. Um, you know, could developer experience is lots of hard work. Um, to really account for the different types of developers and their background and experience in building something. It's really hard to get it, you know, perfect for anybody really for that matter. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I don't intend to make any disparaging harsh criticisms, even if I fumble my way through something uh, for the first time. Um, and uh, it's really with the mindset of sort of being growth oriented, right? Um, uh, things that I see that don't go so smoothly. Uh, the idea is that, well, that's a good lesson for all of us because chances are things that we work on also have problems like that that can be addressed, uh, but also to take a time to acknowledge when something works really, really well because maybe that's something, uh, something I work on uh, does need to be improved upon uh, in my own products. So where this is really coming uh, was a little bit inspired by um, an API days talk. Um, and uh, I, this harkens back to uh, messaging or communications theory that you know you only have three seconds to get someone's attention, 30 seconds to make a point, that kind of thing. Uh, well, in this talk, uh, that sort of logic or framework was applied as a litmus test for software development APIs, right? Three seconds is really all you get to really help someone understand what the API is, or they might click away and go look at something else. You only have 30 seconds for someone to sign up. Like if it's hard to get signed up or figure out how to get started, um, chances are someone's gonna go look at a competitor. Um, and three minutes to create an account, execute a call and use the result. Um, some people might refer to that as, you know, time to hello world. Well, I think three minutes is very aggressive, um, especially if I have to like type in a form, you know, even just my email address and name is gonna take some time. So I'm a little more generous with that. So uh, with that um, mindset of, hey, we're gonna do this at 3.30 PM, my local time, um, you know, 3.33, I'll give about 30 minutes plus or minus, um, I think is, is, is a fair amount of time to be able to have a successful result. Um, it's an amount of time, maybe if I am have a very heavy meeting schedule, I can find 30 minutes or an hour in between and try something out and figure out, hey, does this work uh, to solve a problem I have? And so some of why I'm doing this and why I'm streaming it, um, if anyone joins me, feel free to, you know, add comments or questions. Um, if I don't get to them, sorry, um, I might be in the flow of what I'm working on. I'll look at it later or address it next time. Um, but uh, the, there's a notion of customer zero. So if you're building a project, whatever it is you do as a software developer, you're building something for somebody. Um, and before you give it to the person you really want to use it, um, who comes before, you know, so that zero index array, um, which is really focused on the adoptability of a thing, right? So I'm not talking about quality control control is not just to make sure unit tests work, but it's in the context of actually using the thing. All right? It's a little bit more like testing and production in the sense that, hey, if I have a real world use case, a real world scenario, and I did not work on the product, it gives me that sort of objectivity to understand what's working well and what's not working well. Um, and it's okay not to know how to do something. Um, developers and, and technical folks come from all sorts of different backgrounds. Um, I have some writing and, and blog posts and things to talk about that concept, right? Is that um, I've worked for companies that suggested that everyone, even marketing, finance, and IT should know how to program um, or at least know how to script and automate certain workflows in order to do whatever their job function is better. So um, so there is this notion that you know giving um, a product or a technology to someone who doesn't have a, a stake in building it can 
you know, not have that curse of knowledge and can really use it for real to try to do something um, and allow enough time. And, and hopefully you even create some learning resources as a byproduct of that. And so one key technique for this is friction logging. Um, and so the idea here is keeping a log. And, and a lot of times when people talk about this, it's a written log of things that cause friction, where friction means something that causes frustration, um, things that are complex or feel unnecessary, something that's really hard to understand, um, or you get sort of stuck and don't know how to proceed, right? Um, and these are critical for adoption and for the developer experience, because uh, if you start running into enough friction and come to a stop, you're going to change paths. You're going to go to down to a different lane. So th that's why it's, this is not QC. This is not, oh, it blew up. Obviously, that would be bad too if there was errors or something just did not work or solve the problem. Uh, this is really about you know how well it's executed. So, um, so this is something I recommend for a lot of people to include, you know, people who just join a team, take that as an opportunity to have them during that onboarding kind of log the friction. Um, and one way uh, to make this sort of a nice seamless process, right? So, you know, if you're keeping a written log and taking screenshots or copying error messages, sometimes that's a, a lossy format, you lose the context in which somebody was, you know, working. And so that's why I kind of advocate recording sessions, and, you know, that also time boxes it, you schedule a 60 minute meeting, you give it a task, and then you go and try to execute that task and record it. And then if it didn't go swimmingly, uh, you have a record, right, of whatever the errors were. And, and, and certainly if someone can articulate the things that are going wrong, that really helps. So uh, that's what friction logging is all about. And so that's why I'm uh, live streaming this is because I get a recording of what my experience is while signing up for a product uh, or feature. Uh, my hope is that occasionally people will join me who have an interest in the space and might be able to point out things that I don't along the way about what makes a really good developer experience um, and um, where we can all approve, improve in some ways. So, um, you know, shows are at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I am streaming uh, sometimes different content on Twitch and YouTube, um, but uh, there is a, a website, developerxp.com. And by website, I mean it's a text file uh, that has some information about like the upcoming schedules. Um, so uh, actually, I ended up flipping in Atlassian Forge I did on Friday. So today is actually going to be Clarify um, or Clarif AI. Um, but I'm also going to be looking at Monite and Ably uh, coming up in future sessions uh, this week. Uh, so if you have an interest in either of those um, particular uh, products or companies or whatever, uh, feel free to join me. Um, with that all out of the way, um, I think we can get started. So I'm going to hop over uh, to our web browser. This is what I was talking about the website. So today we're going to look at Clarify. Um, I remember. Um, Hey, someone has joined me. I saw a comment. Thank you. Um, so I remember hearing about them a couple years ago uh, before all the AI um, uh, hoopla of recent times. So um, so I haven't actually um, played with it before. I'm not affiliated in any way. So uh, more or less, I'm just going to learn about it today. So usually uh, when I search, and this is important for any websites, is to really think about like what the entry point is. Um, obviously, you know, there's probably an assumption that you're going to go to clarify.com or whatever.com. That's not always the case. Um, you know, I might be saying, hey, I want to get started. Um, with clarify because I'm only have a set amount of time. Um, so that is something to consider uh, in terms of, you know, hey, what is the uh, onboarding path for someone getting started for the first time? Um, so this is a SEO consideration, something that really should be taken into account. So if I'm trying to get started. This is actually showing me this is a first link. Although I like this notion that there's something welcoming me already. Um, so let's see what's here. So the very first link is taking me to this help center get up and running quickly with the world's most powerful platform for ai okay um and i'll, I'll take one step back and saying one of the notions i have here is um that what i'm trying to build is around video analytic uh, or video processing uh specifically um and deriving insight from video and that's what i'm looking for and i i saw 
this um, company listed within that area, uh, which is what I'm looking for. So I do have a project in mind, which is, you know, um, when doing, a, you know, an evaluation, it's important to kind of have something in mind what you're trying to build, especially if you're trying to ask someone else to evaluate it. But um, so this seems like, you know, not really a helpful link right off the bat. Let's see this welcome. Um, complete platform to deploy, maintain, and manage your AI models. End to end life cycle, Discord, Slack channel, Twitter, LinkedIn. So lots of different places to go. Um, you know, I find that so this welcome center sort of location seems appealing. Start here, five minutes or less, which is something I'd be looking for. Like, what is the quick start? Let me get a feel for what it's like to use it. Um, the other side of it is I do often want to see at least the main page a little bit. So it's again, that uh, at first three is within three seconds, can I figure out what it is? And so if I did search for just clarify, you know, this is what I was computer vision production platform for modeling unstructured image, video, text, and audio data. Uh, so that is something that was why I was interested in um, learning more about it. Uh, let's see, is there any other interesting links here? I mean, there's some reference. Uh, Python SDK pops up pretty quickly, which makes sense uh, if I were going to be doing some custom coding with um, OpenCV or something like that. So, all right, but I'm kind of here, start here five minutes or less. That feels like the time to hello world. So I'm kind of led right in um, to my first predictions. So, so the first thing, of course, is SEO, finding the website in the first place. Now it's also, what is the information architecture like for the website. Um, you know, so I'm on the clarify guide at stocks.clarify.com. So I feel like the right place. I'm looking for technical documentation. I see some tutorials that Python SDK guide I mentioned before seems pretty high up. There are lots of other API guides, portal guide. What is it? portal? Portal, maybe that's a account dashboard, something like that. Uh, product updates. API status, blog, so on. I sometimes do like looking at blog posts. I don't know if other people do as well, just to get a sense of like, hey, um, what's what are some use cases? The simple clarify workflows, what that means. I go away. Um, native vector databases. Nougat. Yeah training a classifier. None of these necessarily seem to apply to my use case quite yet, so that's okay. Um, going back to the, the main web page while I'm here thinking about it, um, this is, I, I do look for these quite a bit. You know, it's just sort of a proof point of like, well, okay, well, who's, you know, is there recognition or awards in some way, or, or is this a, you know, fly by night, a few people in their garage working on a thing? Um, but it seems like there's, um, you know, some validation here, um, that there are companies using it. Um, I do sometimes look at, you know, for logos like this in terms of if I'm have some private data, um, is this a thing that, you know, a corporation can use, uh, if I'm looking at this from like a startup perspective or something, I'm just coding as a side project. That's one thing. Uh, if I was uh, part of an enterprise, obviously it's a very different set of evaluation criteria. So knowing which direction is being leaned on, you know, like if scale is important to me or features is important to me, sometimes both, um, that may be a consideration in terms of maybe these numbers are proof points for me. All right, I'm done exploring. I'm going back here. Let's go ahead and get started with the first ones. Now, I haven't I haven't signed up for an account yet, um, so I do see that that is the first step. Um, I do like that uh, I can see really quickly. There's five steps. You know, I have a sense of like how how much of my day is it going to take for me to get through this. Um, so I think that this is setting expectations in a good way, which is nice. Um, let's see, AI, we talk about computer systems, can make predictions. Hmm. Okay, models offering ideas. Most type of concepts, all right. Um, so I don't have an account, so let's go ahead and see what this onboarding experience is like. Um, interestingly, I'm 
prompted for cookies again. Um, I, I, that's actually a tricky thing. I, I know there's some third parties that'll manage cookies for you if you don't do it yourself for a web team. Um, but obviously, this is going to be a different domain. Um, but the hope is anything that's you know a subdomain would still up, apply to the first one. I should probably just I use a different browser here. I should just install a plugin and make it go away. So, anyways, um, a nine point nine release. I don't know what that means. That's okay. I'm going to ignore that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. Now, I apologize. I am going to move this off screen while I sign up um, and tell you a little bit about what I'm seeing, even though uh, you're not seeing it. Um, but I'm inputting my name, email address, and I have to pick a password. So I'm using a password generator and putting that in, and agreeing to some terms, creating an account. Um, and then I'm asked to verify my email. Uh, so I'm going to go check real quick. I got a verify link. All right. So I'll move it back now. All right. So I got in a little bit. Um, let's see. Now, there are some follow up questions. There are different schools of thought on this of how important um is it to be focused um answer the following questions and we'll do the rest um okay your goals um not really here to learn about ai um maybe i'm here to explore community models to a certain extent um Maybe there is an element of generative AI to what I want to do, probably an LLM type of thing. I'm not looking to build my own model or deploy one. Um, maybe there's a little bit of data preparation here as well. I don't, I don't know how this question is going to help me. And I think that's, you know, um, important in these onboardings is like ask as many questions like when i'm signing up for account i don't care if there's a couple of questions but um in some ways you know you know you know we'll use answers to make sure you have a fantastic experience and i'm not sure how that helped me do anything here yet um all right i'm gonna move this off again because it looks like maybe it wants to do other me to put in other information i don't know nope i I must have clicked the wrong button. Um, OK, so how would I like to get started? I guess I'll do a guided tour. Although, you know, so now I'm in a weird predicament, right? I was going through here. Am I going to get a guided tour? You know, here, step two, verify email address. Um, OK, email validation, which I did. Click my first application did i did i okay so i guess that's more or less what i'm doing here so suddenly this guide is telling me what i'm experiencing from signing up um maybe this helps set my expectations before i sign up as to what i'm going to see um, but anyways um my first application already created although that's not really okay so start with a blank or use an app template so it seems like that might be out of date a little bit, um, which is okay. It's hard to kind of keep these things. You know, the, the the dashboard, the documentation will always be a lagging indicator of um, the, uh, um, let's see, getting started. Input type, image, video, text document. So that's nice. I mean, it already, you know, this does, you know, given the problem I have, which is coming in with uh, video processing, um, it's good to know that this is already kind of key um, understanding. Um, but, uh, you know, there's advanced settings. I don't know what the advanced settings mean. Let's see, does that get covered over here? So this is, you know, my first application already should be created, but I'm creating it and that's fine. You know, upload an image. Um, Okay. Is there any constraints on what the image is? It's not clear from this. Um, you know, and I, I think there's two different ways to think about it getting started too, right? Like it could provide me the data that I need. 
Um, and of course I could flip in my own data to try it, you know, as my second pass sort of thing. But I mean, anyways, I'm going to come back here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, oh, go away. Um, I guess universal is the way to go. I'm going to go ahead and create an app. Okay. My first application also, uh, okay. Something happened. I, I did not read fast enough. That's why I record a video because I could go back and look at it. Um, and anyways, uh, pre-trained model or build a custom model. And so here's where I do want a community one, which is great. Um, and more than a community one, I'm hoping. Huh. Okay, wait. Yeah, I guess I'm still in the guided tour. So now I have to find the model I want. Um, Okay, so I see some of the, you know, image generation, large language models, you know, visual classifier, visual detector, text to text. Yeah, so I think I'm looking for visual segmenter. Um, which is not one of the filters here, but that's okay. Um, and it's interesting. It's got audio. Video is not listed as an input type here. I mean, you could just argue, you know, that's just a combination of image and audio. So I guess image maybe is, you know, visual detector it's there. Okay. So that helps sort of filter down. And there are different model types. Okay. Here's that full list. Okay. I do like this um, um, sort of ability to kind of search uh, in a way to find the things that I need. Lots of use cases. Yeah, you know, 67 seems like almost a too large of a list, but um, but that's okay. And I also see here, so what am I seeing? I guess I am seeing that the person or organization has created a thing as well as the general segmentation or subject. I think I'm gonna want subject, or at least that's the one I'm gonna try. Okay, model workflow. So I clicked one. I guess I was expecting to find a little bit more about it, which is fine. And so, yeah, so this is pulling in community generated data or oh it's i don't know what's happening here so these are sample data i think so i'm actually seeing it in action right now is that what's happening i'm gonna guess this is gonna come back with savannah and elephants something like that I'll wait a few more moments. I forgot to set the timer today. Um, sorry. Yeah, I, I, usually 30 minutes to an hour is kind of what I'm shooting for. Hmm. Still thinking about it. Okay. Got it. Well, I see it's done something. It said subject, non-subject. Sub, yeah. Okay, so I, that's true. That's not an identification. It's just separating out. So, um, which is still kind of what I think fits into my use case. But I think I was hoping the a model might do both. Um, maybe I have to look around and see if I can use more than one, or you know, run them serially in some sort of workflow. Um, well. I clicked a thing and now I'm back to my dashboard. Whoops. Anyways, all right, I'm gonna, <laughs> so now I'm gonna switch back to the, hey, maybe I'll read about what I just did wrong. Um, you'll be reacting to that individual page so I can upload inputs. Hmm. Yeah, so here's my inputs. Okay. What is this? It 
So there's no indicator of which of these are required or not. So it does seem like I have to put in all of this information, which is always kind of, I mean, I could put in real information or I can make it up. Um, you know, what I'm trying to do isn't necessarily related to my day job. So the, you know, that doesn't make it any less valid as a, a use case, you know, if I'm, you know, working on a, a separate project. Nah. Anyways, so I can't get here without telling them more about myself. So I'm going to go make some stuff up real quick. Where do I want to be from today? What's my company? Developer XP. Um, and, and enroll is always interesting. Uh, yeah, so I guess software engineering development seems most appropriate for me. That usually also means I'm not going to get a whole lot of questions um, or sales call. Whoa, resource does not exist. What was that? Dang it. Um, it went too fast. Uh, okay, so I guess it's a new portal. And now I'm getting lots of messages from the bot. Go away. Is there an option to hide this? Nope. Okay. Oh my goodness. I I already answered that question. Okay. Um I I I'm not against chatbots um from a user experience, but I think there's certain places where they should be, especially when they can be helpful. Um, you know, so you know, like um facilitating me asking a real person questions could be a useful thing for both me and for uh, the company. Um, using it to give me alerts and like, you know, announcements, that doesn't feel like the right place for it because it is so pop up y in my face. Um, if I use it to search, you know, like as an AI assistant to search, that could be useful as well. But then I'm always between, am I going to use this search and find something that's a text match, or am I going to use this, which is going to, you know, you know, some of that's probably um, shaped by bad impressions. I don't know. I don't know. I could ask questions here, but I almost always get bad results, I think. Um, small window that pops up to upload your inputs. So I guess, okay, so I'm back here. Upload inputs. So I guess I'm going to have to pick something. Let me see what I can use. So I guess this is where maybe I will. Uh... Yeah, so let's use this one. Ready to upload inputs. Okay, uh, these are files. Yep, that's fine. Um, keep window open for multiple uploads, not necessary at this point. Let's go ahead and upload it. So what I'm uploading is actually a screenshot of a tool and an error message. I'm wondering if I can identify the error message um, very cleanly. So that's my test case. Um, so as I say, if I'm going through here, it would be nice to have a really positive experience, um, whether or not it meets my end use case goal. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect match. I still want to be able to get something. Um, so predict. So I uploaded an image, select a model or workflow link. Um, wait, so let's go back. So I selected inputs, I uploaded an image. And then now I'm supposed to get a prediction. Did I miss a step? Hmm. All right, let's go back and look here. So if I click on this, anything? Yes. Oh, okay. Whoa. Resource does not exist. Yikes. Um. That is not great for what I was trying to do. So this is undefined over here. I suspect that has something to do with it. Ooh, all right. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna let's try this again. All right. All right. So I have a workflow. Is that what I want to click? Oh, now I'm to another welcome screen video. Clarify workflows. I might want this later, but now's not the time because I was looking for something else. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. Maybe I'll be able to find that again the next time we come around. What happened? Okay, so let's go back to my inputs. I still have an image that was uploaded. I'm clicking on it. Okay, great. So we'll we'll call that somehow I got into a weird state in the web application. It can happen. Um, okay, manually add annotations or add a model. And this is where I want I want to test a model. But didn't I thought I was going through that guided thing before? I forget what it was called. Generative. Filter or. Select or add a concept. Annotations. That, okay. Well, so what am I seeing? I guess this tool would allow me to annotate in some way, would be potentially helpful. Like if I want to highlight and train my own model, but what did I do? Click on this icon and draw a rectangle on the image to define a region of interest. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I thought. Huh. Okay. Am I getting errors? Oh, my. I need two consoles. Ooh, lots of errors. Invalid ID label. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, okay, so I'm not going to do a bounding box. Or do I have to add a tag first? Error message. Ah, okay. Okay. I I suppose, you know, that could be useful. You know, certainly if I'm building my own model or taking a community model and then maybe iterating on it or something like that. Um, hmm. But it still didn't allow me. I was hoping maybe a community model would already be really great at doing this. So let's go ahead and click models. Okay, training models using data sets and bulk labeling. Hmm. I, I feel like I've maybe gone off the rails in my first experience here, unfortunately. Um, I, I started down the path of a guided tour and then it disappeared. So then I ended up in the dashboard. Now I'm exploring on my own and I keep getting to places that have information, which would be useful, but I have to dismiss it because it may not be what I'm ready for yet. So I think, you know, that, that gets, you know, similar to the SEO experience at the beginning, right? People come in through different paths of what they're trying to do. I'm still trying to explore. Um, in some ways it might be nice to be able to get the, the help. I don't know why the little three indicator, I just can't stop looking at it. Um, okay. So annotator predict me. Oh, let's see. Maybe that's the difference. So if I come back here, select this instead of annotate predict. Okay. Let's just see universal workflow. Model output is not supported in web viewer view JSON. Okay. And eventually, you know, my thinking here is, yeah, I mean, that this is an API I'm going to be able to call. Um, um, I don't know what I'm getting here.
Model was trained and ready. That that's I don't understand why that's being generated here. I mean, obviously, one image is not enough to really train or do anything. I, I guess that's where, you know, so here in the quick start, they uploaded an image of a dog. I could go get a dog picture and upload it. So I should be able to predict, select a model or workflow, general workflow. Yeah, so this UI has changed a little bit. Yeah, actually, is that? Yeah, multimodal clip embed. Wait, is that mine? You know, so there's a universal, a workflow version. Did I, is this my, so I created this workflow Yeah, I don't know if that's what I want though. Data sets, is this new to me or new to the platform? So if I click here, modules are new, data sets are new, I guess. Let's go back to the overview. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm maybe not going to follow along. I'll actually skim through here a little bit more quickly to see, like, am I getting, yeah, the thing I want after selecting the workflow, the predictions will be processed and populated. Right. So I, a general workflow, <laughs> You know, maybe this works with the dog because they had one pre-populated, but now I created my own first application. So therefore it doesn't have the right model to do the right thing. So let's try some, let's try a different one, maybe. This one says only a minute. Now, I guess that's a, you know, five. So that's AI predictions. Your first visual search. Okay, perform a visual search. Compare images based on their visual similarity. So let's say this. Okay. Set up your account or log in. Verify your email address. Sort of surprised, to be honest, that this is step one and two. I mean, I guess if I ended up on this page first, I would need to do those things. But didn't I just do them under the same start here basics? Um, uh, from an inference, I mean, it's hard to, you know, to assume what someone knows at any given part within the documentation. Um, I think here, instead of having the big images again, it might be nice to just say like, hey, if you don't have an account, go back to, you know, this first part um, again, or something like that, um, just to sort of save a little bit of scrolling. But anyways, uh, create an application, log into your account, create an app. Let's try that. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, create an app. Um, when the small window pops up, create a new application. Also select face as the base workflow. Um, I don't have a, so I have to start with a blank template or an app template. Where, where is this? Okay, face. I can't wait. Um, so there's face sentiment, face v4. I'm going to assume face v4 is what is meant here. OK, let's go ahead and call this quick start um, visual search. Huh. 
So I can't choose image or video here. That could be a problem. Okay, or do I? Okay. So I have to put an input type. I mean, the star indicates that that's a required thing, but they're both grayed out now. We'll try it anyway. Okay, so I created the app, add a model. This does not tell me I have to add a model. Oh, no. Um, but I do want a community model, so let's just assume. Okay, so we're back to this thing again. Let's see if I can find face here. Do maybe I have to know like upload a sample image. I, I'm I don't really I'm not really trying to identify faces though. That's not my use case. But I mean I could go and download some, I guess. And see what it thinks of the poster behind me. Yeah, I guess I can do that. All right, well, we'll go ahead and do face detection. Sure. Um, guided tour face detection. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I see the... It's only detecting three? No. I mean, because it's, I mean, clearly there's more. So what is it? Is it? Hmm. Okay, let's read about this model. I I, I, I kind of like that I see it working, right? Like we were doing that bef before, but it does create a little bit of a scroll wheel. And I don't know if it's the thing I want to run yet without scrolling. So I think from a... I don't know. I mean, it's fine, it, 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 but if I were laying out the page, I might do it the other way around. Um, I don't... Okay, so I can change cover images. Is that because it's a community model, or am I changing that for me? I don't know. Hmm. Detects faces and outputs bounding boxes. Uses Inception V2. Okay. General purpose face detector false positives for small objects open images yeah okay but it is interesting that you know there's at least you know a few here that seem pretty clear uh, in fact this bounding box chose the person behind another Yeah. Now here's an example where it worked really well. This one is working really well. This one's working really well. Likewise. So it might just be these, uh, like a very crowded scene could be, you know, a problematic, um, or maybe there's a limit, right? Is that maybe, no, there was one here that had five. Um. What does the JSON look like when running something like this? All right, so cached prediction from model. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of. Okay, so the model version. So I think that the what's interesting to me is this is this I wonder if the API returns all of this um, and like status code of ten thousand I don't know what that status means um, this looks like a very busy you know like it seems to be including oops a lot of my inputs which include the model and the input data and then here's the results yeah 
so I mean, fundamentally, you know, I mean, it might even be that this viewer, if those were collapsed for me, I would at least be initially focused more on the results. Um, like what the regions are, because it's all, you know, like if I were calling this an API, that's that's the, the data that I care about. Ah, I clicked on a thing and it exits out completely. I wish that didn't happen because I don't know how to get back to it. Okay. Well, yeah, so this third step again with the email and everything, uploading training data. Um, so yeah, so I'm not doing, you know, I'm not interested in doing custom models, so that's fine. Let's see, they've got a glossary. Let's uh, continuing to explore. So I, you know, I think I've been at it for over 30 minutes. I did not get to my like hello world aha moment yet. I don't think. I mean, because, and, and mostly I say that because I, did, even if I had their data, I didn't run through like a workflow. Like I didn't call an API. All I did was use the dashboard. So that doesn't help me build my application yet. Um, so maybe I learned some concepts though. Um, if they were unfamiliar to me, so I'm I'm okay with that. Um, there's lots of terms here. That's kind of nice that um, there's a glossary. It's always a good idea. Applications, creating an application, prediction and search, authentication. Okay. Community portal. Here's more tutorials. Add AI to a Node.js web app. This might be closer to what I'm looking for. You know, I, I've seen it with some other products that I've looked at, right? Is the idea that I can download an app or clone a GitHub repository and run it, even with no other, you know, changes. Um, and then I can give it some input data, hopefully predefined, so I know I'll have a successful result. Maybe that's what this tutorial will actually walk me through. Um, which would be kind of nice um, onboarding. I think I think this start here. I ended up getting a little astray a couple of times, which is unfortunate. Um, but I'm not completely deterred. I'm going to continue playing with this, but um, because yeah, maybe it's these tutorials that'll get me a little bit closer. Um, I do find it interesting. This tutorial is for the web application, but there is very specifically a Python SDK guide here. So I don't see a JavaScript guide. Um, and I do like to see when I'm starting something, I do like to see a architecture diagram to a certain extent. Um, I'm not sure that I've completely seen that. So maybe maybe if I go back to Clarify's website, there may be something that would help me kind of, you know, just get a sense of like, what what it is you know and it's a market a architecture but that's okay input data scribe space time and light armada mesh um hmm. ai lake okay well that didn't store and search vectors and inputs auto label data fine-tune models deploy and iterate Mm -hmm. You know, the context of where I was going was I'm coming back here and like, okay, wait. So like if I'm setting up my application just to know where like, what is the easy path versus the hard path? Um, should I be thinking Flask <laughs> backend is the way to go because there's a Python SDK um, or, you know, add AI to a Node.js web app. So is there a JavaScript SDK? And if so... Where do I find it if it's not going to be here? In this blog post. Oh, okay. So this maybe started as a blog post and it was pulled into the docs because it was helpful. Um, okay, so this is they're going to do it with a next app. It's, you know, so if you're playing the odds, React or Next JS makes a lot of sense. Um, I, it's nice that it, they're using TypeScript here. 
sort of start off with something, you know, a little bit more modern in terms of framework and everything. Um, yeah, so it's, well, wait. So what I'm looking for now is I'm just sort of scanning through some of the code to get a sense of, is this just making REST API calls to a backend or is there something else going on here um, that would be useful to know? Um, get snapshot file from request. Okay, maybe this is the, yeah, so here's the prediction code. This is probably so. There's a there is a Node JS gRPC clarify service. Hmm. So there's a lot of input, you know, imports here, which feels a little bit more complicated than you know I was maybe thinking. So it looks like everything's a remote procedure call. Is that how? It's been implemented. I mean, you know, running any model is going to take some time, so maybe that's makes sense. Um, I think I, I mean, I, you know, it's a block. I, it's a kind of a fun project idea just to get to figure out how some how to evaluate an image classification, cat or dog. Yeah. I think that's, you know, maybe that's a little bit what I had in mind. There was error, not an error, right? Um, <laughs> accuracy, data precision, recall. This So this one's explaining a lot more of the theory of the sample itself. Oh, wait, but never gets around to the code. Um, Okay, so this, um, you know, again, I didn't actually re read it, so maybe it's not fair to judge, but um, confusion matrix might be accurate. Because like, I guess I was expecting to see how to like use an API to make use of the model training from a tutorial here. Um, whereas I think this is, it looks much more conceptual. Um, that's okay. Uh, it's just not necessary. So image classification, likewise here, very theoretical. It's not about using APIs. Okay. Um, there's an API guide. I can go back to the basics. API clients. Okay. Yeah, so it does seem like interesting. Seems like they're definitely pushing the gRPC model. I, I, this might actually be, I mean, I don't know that this is related to me onboarding, but it seems like if I'm going to use the API, um, clarify our models. What is, uh, I must have skipped somewhere. I don't know what a mata is. Or at least I'm drawing a blank. Maybe I do. Amada. Amada. Mm. I'll look that up later. Um, hmm. Low latency, high throughput communications. I mean, I could see with most calls probably are long running so um a little bit more of a asynchronous model so maybe that's one reason that influenced that decision it's, it's, it's certainly interesting um um but i think that you know thinking about developer experience as well you have to think about what other background your audience might be using or familiar with right so if someone's coming in from using graphql all the time 
they're probably going to first hope that you had something like GraphQL uh, or if someone's coming in saying, I'm, I'm just, uh, I use REST APIs for just about everything, that might be where that um, base knowledge would be starting from. So gRPC, I would say, is a little bit more on the outlier side. So I do like that there's a little bit of more of a discussion here about why that decision was made. Um, okay. Well, I think I'm going to call it. Um, I'm not quite to the hour, but um, I have not necessarily had um, the the first, you know, Eureka positive uh, um, outcome yet. Um, so I think that means I'm going to have to kind of take a step back, maybe go through this web app and see how far I get. Um, because ultimately that is what I'm, my development environment is going to be a Node.js service uh, or function um, that will want to talk to um, the results of a model. Um, maybe I have to think about caching the results or providing some other interface in between anyway. Um, you know, I'm not going to be necessarily upload an image to my app and throw it over. Um, Maybe I do have another type of complex workflow, but I think that's going to be me digging in a little bit more here. Um, I've got oriented to a certain extent. It does seem that you know they have lots of channels, so whether I prefer Discord or Slack um, seems like I have that choice. Um, though you know, in some ways, it might be an interest. You know, I, I of course use both, but fragmenting the audience now, I I don't know which one's going to get me better support, so I might end up needing to join both. Um, that would be my only consideration. Um, it does seem like, you know, I did stumble upon there, right? There. There's a number of client um, interfaces, which is good. Um, I'm, I'm only looking for Node, but, you know, sometimes if I were long-term going to build a model, I might be doing something a little bit more in Python. I definitely want to see more. Uh, you, know, I, uh, you know, maybe I have to go check the blog again. I didn't see anything when I was scrolling down that seemed relevant, but... Um, this seems like you know kind of a fun demo, but may also be something I can learn from in terms of how to actually make the underlying API calls uh, for a model. I think the the navigation up here is always something to think very carefully about and where someone might go. Um, and you know, I think my experience here came into the well. Yeah, I want to I want to explore some of the community models. I might be equipped to build one but if one already exists i'm gonna you know buy before i build so to speak um try to find one that already works especially if some of them are developed and provided by clarify but you know maybe when i go back to this you know it's a platform an ai lake automate data labeling you know there's a ui for that which made sense model training and evaluation you know there is nothing here that says hey we are a marketplace for models the way like a hugging face or something like that is so um but it did seem to give me that option to search during that walkthrough which also just further perpetuated my belief about what this was right um if i come uh oh no maybe i didn't want to click that plus um Oh boy. Um, okay. I might have clicked the back button. Something's not working there correctly. Um, anyways, um, that was uh, entertaining. I, I think, you know, I think there's still a lot of potential here um, with this tool. So I'm definitely going to play with it a little bit more. Um, you know, that 333, like I said, is a little aggressive to assume three minutes is enough to do much of anything of value. It's kind of, um, I've been playing around with some hackathons. So it's the same idea, right? Like, oh, and 48 hours, I'm going to build an app that changes the world and solves world hunger. It's just not realistic. Um, me getting, you know, all the way to, you know, proof of concept up and running after 60 minutes, it's not realistic. Um, so, I, you know, I, I often will maybe play with a tool for a day um, and fumble my way around, learn a little bit more about where the different resources are, um, find the model. I'll probably get around some of these UI quirks um, um, as I get a little bit more experience with what the expectations are um and yeah so i think there was a few lessons there in terms of um a, a good developer experience um and next time i think uh what was it um monite 
it's the next one on my schedule. I think this was uh, sort of a continuation of, hey, I need to accept online payments. I saw this as a company in that space. So I thought, hey, it's worth giving an evaluation. Um, if I do build a model and I want to monetize it, that would be the way to do it, right? So anyways, uh, hope that was entertaining. Have a great day uh, for the rest of the day. Thanks.